Okay, so here is what you're going to need. You're gonna need a ring. This is from Michaels. It's just a floral ring, but you can actually find them on Amazon and they're actually gold. This was the only thing that we could find at our store. This one is a 10 inch and they're basically just called a floral hoop, um, but I will link the gold ones that I found on Amazon. Next, you're gonna need whatever color yarn you want. I used pink and I like this one because it's a little bit of a thicker texture and it has those like nice little swirls. So I just thought it would look really nice and chunky on the actual um, ring. And obviously I like pale, pale pink, so you know, whatever color you want. Then you're gonna get some scissors. Uh, these ones are rose gold, so they're extra fabulous. And then you will also need a spray paint specifically for this one because I couldn't find any gold rings, but if you find the gold rings, then you don't need to do this step. But for me, I just chose a nice gold metallic spray paint from rust -Oleum. So we're hanging it with yarn or whatever this, it's like a lanyard. That way we can get both sides. And we're basically just gonna spray paint it so that it's covered in gold. We'll oh. just have to redo where the string is, I guess. Well, that's gonna be covered with yarn anyway. Oh, okay. Okay, hold it forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> Here, hanging on the, um, on the ah. snowblower, I don't care. Snowmo blower, that one. The, oh. snow, the snowmo blower. Hanging it on the snowmo blower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, once you've let your ring dry so that it is nice and dry, and this took a long time to dry, guys, make sure that you cut your yarn to whatever length you want. I th I think 40 turned out to be a really good length. And then you're just gonna basically cut like tons and tons of pieces. I think I used 26 um, pairs of two pieces of yarn all together so that, that sounds confusing but it was basically 26 pairs of two so um, here I'm just showing you how I basically just measured each piece of yarn up to the former piece and for some reason somehow like they were all mismatched <laughs> even though I measured them up to the 40 so I don't know if like when you pull on it it stretches out like that was kind of confusing I still don't know how that happened but you can always just go back and you know cut back um, all the pieces that they're exact same at the end honestly I don't think it makes a difference because I ended up trimming my little pieces once they were on the ring because you know it's all um, kind of a little bit uneven once it's on there anyway so that's really up to you but I found that 40 inches was the perfect length because you're gonna be bending it like folding the pieces in half um, and I feel like that way it just it has a good length especially for the 10 inch ring so all together I made 52 like cuts of yarn all at 40 inches okay so moving on this looks ridiculous but I didn't want the gold to get on my knobs of my drawers and I wanted to be able to have something to hold my ring so that when I was tying on the string or the yarn, it wouldn't go anywhere. So basically I put socks on top of my knobs so that my knobs wouldn't get scratched and it wouldn't scratch the ring as well. That is really, <laughs> that sounds really confusing. Um, okay, so now basically you're gonna grab two pieces of yarn together. Then you're going to fold it in half so that it's got even lengths on both sides so that you're making that kind of like loop right there. Then you're going to put the loop over the top of the ring and then pull the rest of the, the yarn that's hanging through that loop. So see, I'm putting the two pieces together, bending it in half so that they're even on both sides and then pulling that loop or pulling the yarn through the loop and making sure that the loop is going on top of the ring. You're not going under, you're going over, if that makes sense. So basically, uh, I mean, there, maybe that, yeah, does that show better? <laughs> I'm watching it as I'm saying this, trying to figure out if that's making sense to you guys if you're just watching, but just always make sure that you're going in the same direction so that your loop is always going to be on top. There, I had a really super random piece of, it was like so much longer, so I just cut it off, but see how I'm going over and then pulling the yarn through and that way this is actually the back of the ring so that once you turn the ring over you have these really fabulous little knots and they're all cohesive they all match they're all going in the same direction and then as you're applying it or um, putting it around the ring just kind of give it a tug so that they're nice and tight on there and there's no gaps in between 
I just make sure that I kind of inner or go back and forth between the sides. So like one time I do the right side, one time I do the left side. I mean, it wasn't perfect each time, but I tried to kind of like keep it as even as possible. And also another tip is to start the yarn where that ring is um, attached because there is like a little kind of line in between the ring where they've obviously um, soldered it together. So just start your, your yarn there. That way that's completely covered. And then if you did have to spray paint your ring and you did have like a little part where you spray painted and the string was in the way, that's all gonna be covered with yarn anyway. So you're all good. And you're basically just gonna keep on doing this until you get the amount of yarn on the ring that you like. And I kind of just did it so that it was like, kind of like a quarter of the way around the ring. Maybe that's not even a quarter, I don't know. You'll see when I'm all done, but you don't wanna fill it up all the way up to the very half point. You want it to be so that it's kind of like on the bottom, but not all the way up to the sides. So whatever that works out to be, but you can eye it. It's your, it's your design, it's your piece, so do it how you like it. But that's basically how I did mine. You can see how now at the bottoms, it's kind of like a little bit like uneven. You're not gonna have like all one perfect solid, um, you know, length. So basically I just went back in and kind of fingered out through the yarn and decided like what pieces I wanted to take off. And I wanted mine to be like a nice curved shape so that it was kind of like a nice like soft U. You can make it more extreme if you wanted to make it a V or you can keep it as a U. Um, it's kind of up to you guys, it's whatever you want. If you want all the bottoms to be perfect, then make them perfect. But I kind of like it a little bit more like non-perfect. Here is the finished result. I love it. I think it turned out so cool. This one just keeps going to fly up a little bit. So basically once you flip it around, then you can see you have all these really fun little knots and it just gives it a little bit more texture. Um, and obviously you can trim it how you want it. I kind of left mine so it's a little bit more random, but if you're a little bit more of a perfectionist, you could always cut it so that it's like perfectly even up a little shorter. I kind of like how it's a little bit like you know, just a little straggly at the ends in some places. So that's kind of just up to you how you like it. I love how it turned out. I think it's super fun. The gold hoop is just really cute. And you could do a smaller hoop. Like I said, this one was quite big, um, but you can also do a smaller one if you prefer. Or, you know, if you're doing one for a kid's room, you could always do a little smaller one. I just think it's really fun. It's almost like a dream catcher, but without the actual dream catching section. Um, but it's just a really fun, inexpensive wall hanging. Doesn't it look so cute? It's a super fun, easy, very affordable DIY uh, wall decor that you don't have to have a whole lot of money for. This would have been, I think it was $15.99, plus shipping and handling, which probably would be like, let's just say it was five bucks. So I would have paid $20 for this if I was gonna buy it on the website I saw it on. And instead I made it for, the ring was $1.99, the yarn was $2.50, and I actually still have, where is the yarn? Um, I have this much left, so I could probably make another smaller one with this. So I think, I used definitely, just a little bit over a half of the pack of yarn. So basically this whole lovely little yarn hanging was under $5. Under $5 for a really fun piece of art that you did yourself that took, I mean, it took me maybe a half an hour to make other than waiting for the paint to dry. This yarn is just so beautiful. I love the texture of it, how it's all swirled. It's kind of almost like a unicorn horn in yarn, which is really, really fun, and I love the color of it. So there you go, guys. There is another really fun, very ex inexpensive DIY for you guys. I hope you guys like how it turned out. I think it's really, really cute. I love it. And there it is. There's my little kind of like decor right there. It matches with all of my other decor over here. And I probably will actually make another one for this side because I have extra yarn and I'll just pick up another ring and then boom, I will have a little matching yarn wall decor hanging thing on the other side as well. So there you go, guys. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you found this helpful and you think it's something that you can do. Anyone can do it, guys. It's really easy and it was so, so cheap. Enjoy, guys. And if you do decide to do them, I'd love to see pictures on Instagram or Twitter. Just tag me. I'm at Sam Sherman. Okay, thank you, guys. Bye.